Hi, I'm Gabby from Unlock Success and this is your mini training. Today we are going to dig deep down into time management. So time management is one of my favorite topics to talk about. As a lot of you know, I posted many posts, many stories about time management as in past 15 years, I have been mastering the way I manage my time. So today I love teaching others and showing others how they can use their time more wisely. As I say, time is life. So I want to teach you today how you can use your time more wisely so you are more productive and you are actually getting stuff done. So let's get right into it and let me start with I think the biggest myth that when it comes to time management and that is multitasking. So I know so many people who are super proud of the fact that they are multitaskers. Um, people who feel that especially in the workplace when it comes to uh, working business that they can do three, four, five things in the same time and they feel they are the winners. So let me explain why is this actually not a good way and why is this actually a not a good thing. So research shows that only 2% of the whole population can actually correctly multitask. So if you feel you are in this 2%, I'm cheering for you, but more than likely you are actually not in this 2%. So what multitasking actually does to you is that you are forcing yourself, your brain, your abilities to share the knowledge, the power, the, um, the, the, the beliefs, the values that you have for that specific task into different compartments. If you are trying to maybe design something, but in the same time you are writing an email and then you are watching a podcast, you are actually splitting your abilities into three different compartments where there is a 70% chance you are going to make a mistake somewhere. So multitasking actually increases the percentage of how much of mistakes we do in the task that we are doing at that moment. So I'm not really talking about uh, you cooking and uh, in the same time you are washing dishes, even though um, I actually have a great example from yesterday where I was uh, cooking soup, talking to my sister, washing dishes and cooking potatoes in the oven. And two out of these three tasks actually failed me. So it is not always good to multitask, especially when that it comes to workplace or your business. Try to focus on one of the tasks at the time. More, um, I would say the best thing would be if you are batching the tasks that they are very similar. So you are doing them in the same time and then moving away from that task, going to do another task that has a maybe different feel, different narrative to move on to that task after not doing them um, in the same time. So you can avoid a big amount of mistakes that you are doing. Number two, it's super, super important. And I don't think many people do think about this. And it is about our tasks as such. So the tasks that we are doing on a daily basis might be manual or logical tasks, and then they might be creative tasks. So these two different batches of tasks are so different that if you are planning your day and you put one task that is logical or manual under a task that is uh, creative, your brain can physically not switch over from one to another within seconds. It is so hard to do. And I'm so sure that some of you experienced this before. 
I have experienced this before where I would be on a big meeting where we are talking data, numbers, and then later on, I'm supposed to create a speech. I'm supposed to create maybe a visual or, um, you know, design. It is not working right away. Some people are really lucky that they can just switch right away. But some of us are not that lucky that we can just switch from one to another. So what actually then happens to us is that once we are doing a logical task or a manual task, we then and then we move straight away into maybe creative task. Our brain takes way longer to actually get into the zone of creating tasks. And then the task is taking us a lot longer. So there are two different ways what you can do. And first one is to create when you're planning your week, your days, to create a one day where you are really focusing on doing all your logical tasks or manual tasks. And then another day where you are really focusing on doing all your creative tasks. If you are not able to do that, to split your days into two different compartments, uh, you can do what I do because I'm not able to do that. My days are really mixed between creative and logical. You can at least try to manage it within the times of the day. So maybe you will make sure that in the morning you have all your meetings in the morning and then all the logical parts all the manual parts that you need to do are, are in your morning day and then all the creative ones are in the afternoon or vice versa, just so you have all the same tasks, so all the logical ones together and all the, the creative together. What will this do? It's for you in between these two big batches so all the once you finish all the logical tasks, so you'll be able to get a break, you'll be able to zone in from all the numbers, from all the data that you might be getting on your meetings or strategies or, you know, um, uh, meetings that you are having in work or in your business and then move on to your creative side where you need to maybe, I don't know, work on your podcast, um, write a piece uh, of an article or you need to design something. So that's number two. Uh, that really did help me and it uh, it really changed my my way of thinking when it came to planning because I was really able to move and structure my days a little bit different uh, because honestly speaking for me I'm really creative in the morning and then when it comes to the afternoon not so much so also listen to yourself listen to uh, your own mind your body what is good for you Okay, when it comes to number three, that it's something I have been saying for long, long, long time on the posts and on my stories, if you've seen any calendar. Have everything written down in your calendar. Plan and put everything down. So I am just going to show you guys here. If it's not in the calendar, it does not exist. So I'm talking not only about the meetings you are having uh, in your business or in your work. Um, I'm not only talking about the, the goals that you have put for yourself to do. I am talking about everything. I have written down every single meal that I need to take, the breaks I need to take, lunch, breakfast, a workout, everything, everything is in your calendar. Now, having everything in the calendar and you don't necessarily have to have it on a paper like me, you can easily use a Outlook or a Google, Google Calendar. Um, I prefer to write everything down because I am a very much of a uh, visual person which I need to have the ability to cross something off 
to feel like I've, I've achieved something. So if you also are that person that you are seeking for the satisfaction of a crossing something off with the highlighter, that you have finished a task of your day, that you have accomplished something, I would highly recommend to put it down on a paper as I used to work always from uh, my Google Calendar, but it just this doesn't give me that much of a satisfaction of accomplishment at the end of the day than writing it down on the paper. So another thing, what you should definitely include into your calendar is workout. It's your morning routine. It's any little thing that you do actually want to achieve that day. Remember that if you put something into your calendar, it means that you are making it your priority. So if you don't actually see it in the calendar, there is a big possibility you will forget to do it. That you will forget, you will have that urge, oh, I already did loads today, I, I might just leave it for tomorrow. So creating a good habit like working out or meditation starts from putting it into your calendar and really maintaining that every day or every week or every two days, whatever period of time you choose, so you can actually do accomplish that. So another big part of having everything in the calendar, as I already mentioned, it's to feel that you have accomplished something. Having a clear target or having a clear um, calendar and um, step by step what you need to do that day or that week, it's super, super important for you because you will actually gain a satisfaction at the end of the day, at the end of the week that you have achieved of what you put into your calendar. So I know sometimes, and uh, I used to struggle with this myself, sometimes even though that we fill everything and even though that we highlight uh, everything that we achieved on our calendar, we still don't might feel unfulfilled. We still might feel that we just didn't hit the exact maybe target that we wanted and we didn't feel that um, the exact strategy that we wanted to use or the exact um, steps that we wanted to take happened. What is super important in here is that you every single day make only one goal your priority, the highest priority. So only one goal will be the celebration moment for you, okay? So make sure that when you are putting stuff into your calendar, you highlight put hearts around it or, or highlight it with a different color or put a square around it. At one task, that is the most important task of the day for you. And this doesn't have to be a big meeting you have to do. This doesn't have to be uh, that speech you are writing. It can also just be that 15 minute walk you are going to have with your dog or that 15 minute meditation you will have in the morning. Associate that one specific goal with your fulfillment. Try to do this at least for 21 days, where after 21 days you are able to create a very strong habit that will stay on and go along with you and you will then start feeling fulfilled even if you do not accomplish every single task from your calendar. Last but not least is to make sure that you have a clear goals. We already spoke about this before, but having a clear goals for every single day, week and month, it's something that will drive you forward. And yeah, at the end of the day, it will be easier for you to use your time. 
Have a good day.